Hello everybody, I hope this video finds you well. My name is Lucia and I'm pleased to be your guide today. It's a tough time for everyone. Unfortunately, we do not have the possibility to travel, but we have the great chance to keep in touch and visit the world through the technology. So today I will show you my city, tell you about its history, and at the same time I want to convey a message, a message of rebirth from the place where the Renaissance was born. Can you guess where I am? Welcome to Florence. I'm in front of the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore, one of the most imposing churches in the world. Its construction began at the end of the 13th century, when Florence was a mega city, the most populated one in Europe, the economic center of the continent. Hard-working people made it prosperous. Families of uh, bankers, merchants, producers of leather, of clothes, uh, learned patrons. The building of an imposing and majestic church had to represent the leading role of Florence at the time. At the beginning, the work proceeded quickly, but in 1348, the Black Plague struck the world. More than half of the population died. The works suffered a slowdown due to the pandemic, and this is the reason why more than 140 years were necessary to accomplish the building. I'm in front of the north gate of the baptistry. The baptistry is dedicated to St. John the Baptist, the patron saint of Florence, and it was built to baptize children. It dates back to the 11th century, so it's even older than the cathedral. On 1401, the powerful guild of Kalimala launched a competition to realize the north bronze gate of the baptistry. Many were the participants. Among them, there were Ghiberti and Brunelleschi. Ghiberti won the competition. He did the north gate and later on the east one, known as the Gate of Paradise. But that date, the date of the competition, which is, was the first year of the new century, has been ideally chosen to mark the beginning of a new season that then was called Renaissance. I am in a narrow square near the cathedral where there is the Sasso di Dante, Dante's stone. Dante is the man of the year. This year we are celebrating the supreme poet, the father of the Italian language, 700 years after his death. Dante was born here in Florence in the middle of the 13th century and legend is it that he used to sit here on this stone watching the construction of the cathedral thinking and composing verses dedicated to his muse, Beatrice. We are on the back side of the cathedral and from here you can enjoy the imposing dome by Filippo Brunelleschi, built at the beginning of the 15th century and considered to be a masterwork of Renaissance architecture. It seemed to be impossible to build such a big, sumptuous building but Brunelleschi succeeded. And when people saw it, they were so uh, astonished and admired and everybody loved it. Leon Battista Alberti was a theorician of the Renaissance, a great architect, wrote a very special thing to exalt the beauty of the dome. He said, it is so imposing, so immense, so huge that it can cover and protect all the people of Tuscany with its shadow. In the same year, Filippo Brunelleschi drew up the project of a building of a great form of elegance, but mostly of great social importance, the so-called Hospital of the Innocents. Now we are under the loggia in front of the hospital. It was sponsored by the Guild of the Silk Manufacturing and it was the first orphanage in the world that became a model to be followed. This building was founded to grow up and welcome abandoned children. 
We are here just in front of the place, the exact place, the admission window where women that didn't have enough money left their children and they were welcomed in the hospital and they were given a new possibility and chance. The surname Innocentis is very popular here and was the name given to the children that were raised in the hospital and when they got out from it, they could enter the social life of the community. The idea to give a chance to underprivileged and unfortunate people a confidence in the future mark the spirit of the humanistic wave of early Renaissance. I am in the political center of Florence, Piazza della Signoria, and the palace you see behind me is Palazzo Vecchio, the seat of the government since 1310. It was designed by the same architect who started the construction of the cathedral, Arnolfo di Cambio, and it has always been the center of the political life of Florence. Today is the city hall. The square is an open-air museum of sculpture. You can enjoy most of the sculptures of our originals, such as the equestrian bronze statue of Cosimo I of the Medici family, the gigantic uh, statue of Neptune by Ammannati decorating the fountain, and the Loggia della Signoria, where many important uh, masterpieces from the 16th century and ancient Roman times are located. The Rape of Sabine Women is a group of three figures sculpted by a great sculptor of the 16th century, the Flemish Jean de Boulogne, nicknamed Jean Bologna. And the only bronze statue under the loggia is the Perseus by Benvenuto Cellini. Beside the main entrance of the palace, you can see the replica of David. Michelangelo's David, one of the most famous sculptures and most beautiful sculptures ever made in the world, is now located in the Academia Gallery, in the museum. Michelangelo sculpted it for the cathedral. It was actually in the workshop of the cathedral that he made his David. Today, seat of the Museum of the Opera del Duomo. The replica was uh, carved at the beginning of the 19th century as a substitution of the original statue that was uh, housed inside the building for conservative reasons. It has been actually exposed in the open air for centuries and then it was decided to move it to the building to preserve it from the pollution and the rain. The square, together with the palace of the government, with a kind of uh, imposing castle with the watching tower, there is a building, an historic building, the old Tribunal of the Merchants, Tribunale di Mercatanzia, that today houses one of the Florentine fashion museums, the museum dedicated to Guccio Gucci. The three levels of the palace house the Museum of Fashion. It was opened on 2011 to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the birth of the brand. Can you see that stone of the Palazzo Vecchio? There is a profile carved on it. The legend is it that it was made by Michelangelo at the beginning of the 1500s. He had come back to Florence from Rome. He was uh, working at his renewed masterpiece, uh, Michelangelo's David, and every day he used to cross the square, Piazza della Signoria, and every day he was stopped by a chatty and boring man, l'importuno, or annoying, and uh, one day, once again, uh, unable to get rid of him, standing in front of the palace uh, with his hands behind his back, he did the profile of that man, his portrait, just to kill time. Beside the Palazzo Vecchio, there is a museum, the oldest museum in the world, called Uffizi, the Uffizi Gallery. The building dates back to the second half of the 16th century. It was commissioned by Cosimo I, the Grand Duke of the Medici family, to house the offices of the Grand Duchy of Tuscany. But as soon as it was completed, it became a museum, a private museum of the dynasty. Today it houses great masterpieces of Italian art from the Middle Ages to the 1700s. The Palazzo Vecchio is connected to the Uffizi by an elevated passage, the beginning of a long path known as the Path of the Prince, which is a corridor that connects the political center of Florence, the palace of the government, 
to Palazzo Pitti, Pitti Palace, which is on the other side of the River Arno. The passageway was built by Giorgio Vasari. It's actually known as the Vasari Corridor to allow the Grand Duke and his family to walk through the city in total security. From here, they could move from the Palazzo to the Uffizi and then walk across the Uffizi Gallery and then go on getting out from the museum, walking along the River Arno, passing on top of the Ponte Vecchio, the bridge, till the new residence. The passageway has a length of one kilometer and it was built not only for security reasons, to give the possibility to the Grand Dukes to walk safely from one palace to the other one, but also as a demonstration of power and magnificence. Before the construction of the corridor, there were butchers on the Ponte Vecchio, which is the oldest bridge in Florence. But after the construction of the corridor, it was decided to change, to substitute the butchers with the goldsmiths, the jewelry shops. And now we go inside the Uffizi Gallery. It has been organized a private and exclusive visit of the museum that will open just for you to enjoy it and to enjoy some of the masterpieces of the gallery. So now please follow me, we go inside. <laughs>